My name is Eric Ben. I'm the program director of 3D technology at iMac. And so we deal with a program which encompasses technology, design on 3D technologies. In general, you could say that in, in 3D technology, we try to use as little lithography as possible. Um, but still, uh, the lithography we use for either the TSV has its specific requirements. Also in the stacking, you use micro bumps, which are uh, small uh, three-dimensional features. They require thick resists. They also have their specific litho requirements. Even if they are not uh, submicron, but multi-micron dimensions, they are challenging uh, in their own right. The basic building blocks of the technology, like the true silicon via, are rather well understood, but you also have technologies such as uh, wafer thinning and via reveal, which are thinning the wafer down to 50 micrometer and doing backside processing. And then that step is, is, is quite new, there's new techniques being used, so that is still uh, very much in evolution. So that is the, the currently the limiting step for mass uh, adopt, adoption. And there's a third step in the technology, which is actually the 3D combination, the stacking of the thin dyes, which also has its challenges uh, as compared to the uh, current state-of-the-art uh, technologies. So more and more, um, as uh, systems become more complex and you want to integrate more um, building blocks on a single die, you're facing on the other side with the scaling limitations in the performance of all these heterogeneous blocks. So the system does consist of multiple die and actually the more you can integrate in a single die, the more it becomes interesting to integrate the rest of the system as well at a module level. And the 3D is mainly playing at this module level, so making the clever partitioning between the dies. A lot of the benefits have to do with the system level performance. Um, so the, the performance of a, of a cell phone, a portable application, by using, for instance, a wide IO memory, tightly cobbled in 3D to a logic uh, circuit, uh, cuts the uh, power consumption of the uh, memory uh, processor interface uh, by a factor of 10 or more. So you have longer lifetime of your cell phones, of the batteries, you can do more advanced uh, applications on the two. So it's not immediately visible to the user, but it, it is actually a, a quite a big impact. So in the past, uh, packaging of microelectronics was a kind of afterthought. You, you think about the SOC and it stops at the boundaries of the, of the chip design and then other people will take care that everything works. That is unfortunately no longer the case, so uh, the practicalities of packaging has a big impact on the device performance. And today we, we coined this also as a chip package interaction uh, studies, like with locate dielectrics, if you package it in a wrong way or with too much stress, you may actually crack the silicon during the packaging and you have yield loss, so it's important to bring into the developments scheme much earlier the, uh, the aspects of, uh, of packaging. And of course in, t in 3D is more pronounced than ever because everything is tightly coupled in thermal, mechanical and electrical way, so that has to be assessed uh, up front. We are a research organization that work with our uh, partners on these advanced technologies, 3D technologies, and our goal is to work on the technologies that are ahead of the actual activities at our partner sites, what they are doing today, preparing for the production. So we have to try to look into the next step and the next, next step and see what are the barriers. So when we make choices, it's based on to, one, to what we think as uh, the most likely candidates to, to move the technology forward. And at the same time, we also look into cost aspects, so the practical aspects, because you may think of very exotic ways to, to realize 3D technology, but if they are never uh, going to be commercially applicable, then it doesn't make sense either. So we try to, for instance, model cost of different strategies very early on, so that can guide us to, to make the right choices. So this is always uh, a delicate aspect and balance to, to keep in an original point uh, when we propose a new program to the partners, IMEC proposes a direction and of course we await the feedback and get the feedback from the partners and adjust the content of the program accordingly. So as the program evolves during time, there is a continuous interaction between comments and requirements from the partners and what we in response 
proposed to that. It's kind of dynamic equilibrium, which is changing all the time as we as things evolve. In a field like 3D, um, what is more complex is the diversity of the partners. Because we, we have fabless companies as partners, foundries, memory companies, uh, IDMs, and even OSATs. So it's a very broad spectrum because that 3D technology encompasses the entire food chain of the microelectronics or the entire supply chain. So that is one of the complexities. It's a technology that has uh, its foot in different areas. So you have to understand as a designer what this technology means to your system. The design system has to include the, the, the special properties of 3D integration. Otherwise the designer cannot use it to build his, his complex system. So that's a kind of chicken and egg problem. So you need both communities from the design as well as technology to communicate and to learn about that. And that's one of the things we try to do in our program to bring those two, two communities together.